In a geocoding operation, address data contained in a table or text file are mapped against a street network data set. The street network needs to have attribute fields for address ranges on the left and right sides of each road segment. Mapping addresses has many applications including mapping the customer base for a store, members of an organization, public health records, incidents of crime, and so on. Once mapped, the points can be used to generate density surfaces and can be tied to parcels of land and can be compared to socioeconomic data. This can be important in cadastral information systems. Here I have QGIS desktop open with the street shapefile loaded. So let's take a look at the attributes that we have. We know that we need street ranges on both sides of the street. And you can see here that I have a column called left low and left high with the street address range on the left side of the street and right low and right high with the address range on the right side. And then there's a column with the street name, street designation, street quad, city, and state. So that looks good. I'm also going to add the address table that we're going to map. Let's take a look at that. I'll open the attribute table for the addresses.csv. This file has an address column that combines the street number, street type, and city quadrant. There are additional fields with that address parsed into street, number, and quad. The tool we're going to be using requires separate fields in the address data for street and number. So again, it looks like we have what we need here with this table. Now we're familiar with the data and we can install the tool that we're going to be using. To geocode, I'll use a plugin called MMQGIS. So I'm going to go to the Plugins Manager and on the All tab, I'm going to search for MMQGIS and install the plugin once I've found it. So I'll click close on the plugin manager after that's installed. And MMQ just appears as a separate menu item. So to start, I'm going to go down to the geocode option. And there's two ways to geocode with this. You can geocode against Google or OpenStreetMap using a web service, or you can geocode from a street layer. I'm going to try to geocode from this, my street layer first. And I'll browse for my CSV file. When your columns are named logically, it may pick up on them, so it already picked up on the street and number field in the CSV. Next, I need to tell it what the street layer is. It's streets. And the attribute column in that streets layer that has street name in it. So it's picked up on that. Then I need to point it to the left from, left to, right from, and right to numbers. So left from is going to be left low. Left to is going to be left high right from is going to be right low and right to is going to be right high. There's a building setback since the street layer is a street center line where the actual arc runs down the center of the street and I'm mapping addresses they're going to be on the side of the road so I'm going to put a street setback of 20 map units so that the points get offset off the road a little bit to represent their true location. This is going to generate a new point shape file so I'm going to browse to specify what, where I want that shapefile stored. I'm going to navigate to my lab 6 data and I'll name this street geocode. This tool will also output a not found list. Geocoding operations rarely have 100% success. Street names in the street shapefile have to match the street names in the CSV exactly for there to be a match. So the tool will save out a list of the unmatched records. So I'm going to browse to save the CSV output. Again, I'll save it in my Lab 6 data folder. And I'll just call this Street Not Found. With everything filled out, I'll click OK. Down in the bottom left, I see a progress bar. And you can see how many records have been matched up to this point. OK, so it's finished. So let's open up the attribute table for this layer. I got 199 matches out of the 203 addresses. So that's a pretty good success rate. And you can see that all the attributes from the CSV file are brought in as attributes to the output shape file. It also gives you the latitude and longitude for each. So let's right click on this layer and choose zoom to layer. And let me make these a different color so they show up on this video a little better. I'll make them red and I'll make them bigger dots. 
it's always a good idea to inspect some of the results too. I call this spot checking. So I can zoom into a concentration of addresses and I can use the identify tool to click on one of these and see what street it was supposed to map to. So this is 1801 4th Street. Then I can select the street and see if that looks like it's a good match. This is 4th Street and you can see the address range. So that was 1804. It does look like it mapped to the correct segment there. Never take a GIS operation for granted. Always check your results with a critical eye. And remember that you can also add the not found CSV to QGIS and study it and try to determine why any unmatched records were not matched. I got a high percentage of matches with this technique, but I'm also going to try the technique using the Google Geocoder. So I'm going to zoom to my previous extent. I'll go back to the MMQGIS menu to geocode with Google or OpenStreetMap. I'll browse to my input CSV again. Here it's picking up on the correct address fields, street, state, city, country, and you have a choice of using the Google Maps service or OpenStreetMap. For this demonstration, I'll use Google Maps. I again have to specify my output shapefile, so I'm going to call this Google Geocode. And for the not found CSV, I'll navigate to my Lab 6 data folder, and I'll call that Google Not Found. With everything set, I'll click OK. Again, you'll be presented with a status update on the lower left-hand side. Okay, so it's finished, and down here it tells me 203 of the 203 addresses were geocoded with Google Maps. I'll show you another little trick. If I want to use the same symbology, I can right-click on the street geocode layer, go to Styles, and copy that style. Right-click on the Google, and paste. And I'll just change the color of those dots to yellow, or perhaps orange. So now we can see the two together and they're definitely different results. So again, inspecting these with a critical eye would be key. This Google Geocoder uses the same geocoding engine that's used when you type an address into Google Maps. And one note, it also requires an internet connection for it to work. And it may take several minutes to run, and in part this will depend on the speed of your internet connection. Again, one thing that's easy to test is to right-click on the result and zoom to layer and make sure there aren't any oddly placed points, but they all fall within the city limits where they should, so that's good. The Google Not Found CSV will be an empty text file in this case since Google found a match for every record. At the end of your data collection, a product is usually required. In this case, a map is necessary to complete the lab. Data from several data sources have been downloaded and included in your lab data folder. The final task of this lab is to create a map deliverable. There's no video for this since the map creation has been covered in previous labs. So in this lab, you learn how to geocode address data using the MMQGIS plugin. Geocoding is an important vector data creation process. There are many data organized by address. Mapping such data allows you to generate density maps, measure proximity of points, and perhaps even characterize the neighborhoods the points fall in with socioeconomic data from the census. Maps are often part of a final product of a GIS project or analysis. Data can come from various sources and be manipulated to fit the project. The data should be normalized in respect to file format, spatial extent, and coordinate reference system. Remember, GIS data are often free, and there's a wealth of it on the internet. Just use it with caution and check the accuracy of the data if you can. One should explore the data as much as possible before using it and endorsing it.